If you go down to the woods in Kent, you'll be sure of a big surprise. The Second World War is raging, but they're not real bullets. And that's not a real stiff. And they're not real Nazis. They call this living history. It's all good, clean fun. Or is something darker lurking in the woods? It's Glastonbury with tanks. Every year, over 100,000 visitors come to marvel at the biggest military vehicle show in the world. If war's your thing, it's a fun day out for all the family. Well, everybody, welcome to the KN War and Peace Show 2007, the 25th anniversary of the show that has been claimed as the greatest show on the planet. Are you happy to be here? Today, they're reenacting the Battle of Normandy, 1944. I'm curious. Why do grown men spend their weekends dressed up in out-of-date uniforms, rolling around in the mud? While the bang, bang, you're dead raged on. I went to meet some of the other reenactors who come from all over the world. Hello. Hi. Who are you? Uh, I'm I'm came from Tokyo, yeah. Japan. Yeah. Hi. Who are you? General Field Marshal Eric von Manstein. The Fourth Battalion Middlesex Regiment, uh, circa 1917. Which regiment are you? Uh, regiment Argyles. Are the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders? Your regiment? Gordon. The Gordon, Gordon Highlanders. Highlanders. I'm the Black Watch. And for me, it's the 2nd Regiment of the Legion Étrangère, the second regiment of the Foreign Legion. But you're not French. No, I'm English. You're not Scottish. I'm French. 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 They're ordinary people with a less than ordinary hobby. Most reenactors here do the Second World War, so someone's got to play the Germans. But it seems nearly everyone wants to play the bad guys. Uh, Germans to British, you're probably talking 10 to 1. Yeah, quite incredible. I think it might be the glamour of the uniform. It's the dark side as well. <laughs> yeah, the dark side, if you call it. Yeah. <laughs> the last time Fred Roberts faced the German army was on D Day, and then they weren't playing at killing. Is this real, this kind of scene? Um, or is it, um, I mean, it looks real to me, yeah, but I don't know. Real, but you... but it's not as real as that, because there's a constant fear of everything. It's, it's a fear of getting killed, I think. Looking around, for every one British reenactor, there are ten Germans. Yeah, I don't know why that is, I'm sure. I just don't understand that, quite honestly. These chaps are SS. Yeah. Well, I find it rather difficult to come to terms with that because it always brings back memories and they're only playing as soldiers. And I still find it a little bit um, shivery. <laughs> Here, even the ordinary German soldiers, the Wehrmacht, are outnumbered by the Waffen SS. Originally, Hitler's bodyguards. Aryan supermen, fanatical Nazis. Why would anyone choose to play the SS? You can't portray history with just the nice bits involved. Um, we, we don't tend to hide away from the history. We, we know what the history was about. We understand why it happened. Um, and we try to keep it in people's memory to understand that, that this happened. I think the worst thing you can do would be to let it go and forget about it. It's a bit strange, actually. My, my grandfather was Royal Navy, and I can, I can stand here and say that my grandfather fought for my right to wear the German army uniform. 
you know. To wear the swastika. To wear the swastika. Does this in any way playing the SS? Does that impact on your, you know, your own personal politics? I mean, are you, are you a member of the am Green I a member Party? Of the, am I a member of the BMP? It or might be a question. No. No. Not at all. But so are some of the other chaps, I mean, because, because yeah. I can imagine it happening like that. Most groups are run under, on the understanding that if you come into a group and you start spouting off your own personal politics, um, you know, then you're not welcome. That's a claim I intended to put to the test. Have you met Herman Goering yet? Oh, yes, I've been yeah. voted with the Rikes Marshal last yeah. year. Reenactors take great pride in their attention to detail. All the uniforms are kosher, so to speak. Even the fake wounds look real. Better sleep on duty so we can meet It's all part of bringing the past to life, living history, and it's obvious that the public love it. It's a family affair. Even some of the kids are dressed up as Hitler Youth. Romance is in the air. A couple are getting hitched. Nick Beardshaw and Michaela Zett usually play German medics as reenactors. But previously, we'd seen bride and groom around, dressed in civvies, decorated with SS symbols. My first impression is of a big, fat Nazi wedding. Later, I was told I was wrong about that. Apparently, to the trained eye, many of these uniforms are not Nazi at all. You please stand. Nick and Michaela, you have given your marriage vows and personal promises to each other in the presence of your family and friends, and I am now delighted to pronounce that you are husband and wife. Would you like to kiss your bride? Day, but um, you're in Nazi uniform. No, we're in, not in political uniform, we're just in German uniform, German army uniform. Uh, it's to recreate a period in history which obviously can't be forgotten. We're here to show it justice and show people's respect to everybody. Uh, there's nothing political about it. It's a free country, and on their happy day, they can wear what they want. If tolerance extends to them, then it should also extend to others who feel that getting married in this way is not just a little bit tacky, but tasteless. Do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think we're on the run, we are the boys. Stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England's done, bugger off. <laughs> In Britain, we can afford to remember the Second World War with some affection. In Europe, it's a different story. What did German historian Dr. Karina Urbach think of the War and Peace show? To begin with, I showed her some Nazi knickknacks that were on sale. So let's have a look at this stuff. So there's a, a mouse of Himmler, SS T-shirts, Adolf Hitler, beer map. What struck you? as being interesting or well, shocking? I was, I was so shocked. I, I want, didn't want to be shocked because I thought, oh, God, I don't want to be provoked and I don't want to be a sensitive German. But I was shocked about these marks with Hitler images on it. I mean, it's absolutely disgusting. I mean, the guy wasn't good looking, but apart from that, he was a mass murderer. I mean, you, would, you don't want him in your kitchen. As a teacher herself, did Karina think the living history reenactments had educational value? I'm sure these people are all perfectionists and get it absolutely right. Um, but what do you learn about history from this? Nothing. 
where's the context? I mean, where, where, where's the feeling for war? Where is the political context? Do you feel the fear? Do you feel the, the pain of being wounded? Do you, uh, you can't reenact any of this. All right, lads, you got me. <laughs> In Germany, displays of the swastika and other symbols of the Third Reich are illegal. Indeed, the German authorities are so anxious about neo-Nazis that they've tried to get the whole of Europe to adopt their ban. It, it makes sense in Germany because we, we had the Holocaust. We, we have, um, thank God, we still have some Holocaust survivors around. And I can understand that it upsets them terribly. So we, shouldn't, we should not have this in Germany. But of course, I would never forbid you to do any of this. I'm going to down and try and get a photo. Yes, oh, okay, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 Away from the war games, it looks like a car boot sale for the warrior classes. But trading in Nazi memorabilia is a multi-million pound business. This man, who calls himself Hans, has come over from Germany, where it's a crime to display much of the stuff he's flogging. The German government uh, wants to um, get this ban on swastikas across the whole of Europe. Do you think that's a good idea? No, I think it's nonsense, because it's part of history. And uh, while you ban just the symbols, you will never ban the idea. What happens um, if you were sort of caught on the street wearing that uniform that you're wearing now? Oh, in Germany? Yeah. I would be probably arrested and then the police would take me to the station and uh, I will have to go in front of court, the uniform would be confiscated and uh, they would probably charge me with making Nazi propaganda on the street. You know, why this particular bit, though, of German history? What's wrong with, you know, what are Bismarck's Pomeranian Grenadiers? Uh, why is the fascination for those yeah. uniforms? I mean, it looks good. Probably the one thing is the Nazis knew how to sell themselves, how to make the marches. If you look at Nuremberg, at the Reichsparteitag, they knew how to demonstrate the power. And I would say, at the end, it's, it's fun. If someone is offended by seeing a swastika, he should not go to the show, because he knows what's waiting for him there. Then he should just skip the show and stay at home. Jewish people would say that's offensive. Yeah, then, then he shouldn't come here. Halfway through the War and Peace show, British summertime arrives. I've seen plenty of war, but where's the peace? Even the umbrellas sport SS symbols. When the rain lets up, I meet author Harry Pearson. His book, Achtung Schweinhund, pokes fun at our love affair with the Second World War. So what do you think of the show so far? In a sense, it may be accurate to the British vision of the war because our memory of it isn't of the actual event. It's of all the paraphernalia surrounding it, action man and all these things. So our view of the war is kind of confused, in a sense, by that, because there's a real war and then there's the fictional war that came afterwards, which is all good fun and explosions, and at the end of it, everyone goes home for tea. If I'd come here as a small boy, I think I'd probably have wet my pants with excitement, I must say. So all the things that I spent my teenage years making models of are here. Well, here's, here are models of them, but bigger than the models that I made. Now, have a look at that little detail there. There's the, um, the Nazi in the black coat with his leg up and his, and his dog, and the dog's got a... It's got a leg in its mouth. ..with blood on it. Now, I lasted that. I can remember sort of painting little airfix soldiers when I was seven. What's the single thing that, that you think's missing uh, from what you've seen here so far? I guess that there's nothing about the Holocaust here at all. And, uh, you know, there's nothing about that, the, the political aspect of, the, of Nazism, which, you know, the Nazism was a political movement. I went in search of anything that might commemorate the Holocaust. What I found was not what I expected. How much is this? Five. 550 quid. 